hello guys and welcome back to the channel so guys we're still on the amotecon storyline there's no other story within the nigerian space at the moment so this time around we're going to the pdp camp and Atiku, of course has effectively constituted himself into some sort of a de facto government within the nigerian space an alternate voice so with that guys i bring you this Atiku declares support for amotecon regional policing so that's the headline article declares support for amotecon regional policing so now let's see now what this adamawa citizen has to say former presidential candidate of the people's democratic party pdp atiku abubakar has expressed support for zonal policing following the recent move by the southwest to launch Amotekun. In a statement sent out on Sunday, signed by his spokesman Paul Ibe, Atiku says that it is the right move to ensure efficient policing. The statement reads, as enshrined in the Nigerian constitution, the primary responsibility of government at any level is the protection of lives and properties of the citizen. In carrying out this function, the state employs different layers of measures to ensure effective and efficient policing. It is without doubt that in the past decade particularly, the recent policing administration in our dear country had been stretched to its limits and it is obvious that the reality of our domestic security upheaval will demand us to recalibrate our policing systems. In the First Republic, before we gravitated too much to the center, policing was done federally with each native authority and region having some mechanism to deal with little upsets that were the security concerns of those times. In present day Nigeria, there is hardly any state of the federation that does not contend with some type of security challenges. Because our security challenges are diverse in form and impact, it is thus incumbent that centrally controlled police architecture cannot exclusively deal with those challenges. Consequently, there is a need for the creation of additional policing structures in the country to address the rapidly growing challenges of insecurity and crime. The time is ripe to seriously confront the reality of insecurity in the country by addressing the urgency of introducing state police, zonal police and community policing to complement the efforts of the current federal police. It is obvious that the current levels of insecurity in the country are giving rise to major initiatives such as Amotekon and the issue need not be controversial in the first place. The police are likely to be more effective if they constantly operate in the level of local community or local government because such closeness might create a bond with the local people thereby enabling community cooperation and participation that would engender proactive outcomes in crime prevention. Nigeria is a vast country facing enormous security challenges and therefore there is the urgent need to create more security structures at the local level to reduce the burden on the federal police. The issue of security shouldn't be politicized and monopolized in the face of our current alarming security challenges characterized by the fear of even traveling on our highways by the citizens who might be intercepted by kidnappers and taken hostage for ransom. Local policing shouldn't be mistaken for an effort to hijack the role of the federal police or a competition with the federal government. The obvious inadequacies of the federal police to effectively deal with these rapidly growing security challenges make local policing not only desirable but also necessary. The police are more likely to be effective in areas where they are well known and trusted by the local communities who in turn are willing to share information about known criminals and criminal activities. 
thereby foiling those crimes before they are even carried out. It is a given perception that when people have a role in their own security, they are going to help defeat the crime in their tracks and the more they are involved, the more likely they would perceive the police as their friends. In the envisaged new order, states and local governments shouldn't be reduced to peripheral players in policing and security matters. When local police structures are closest to the grassroots, urgency response will be more effective than the current unwielding chain of command that render local government chairmen ineffective when their people are under attack. As a matter of fact, it is refusing to adopt new ways of doing things that poses a threat to the unity of the country. Therefore, Atiku Abubakar supports community, state and zonal police to complement federal police to deal with insecurity in the country. It has never been this bad to the extent of threatening the unity of the country so now this is now what article abubakar has to say with regards to the uh, nigerian situation especially with the amoteko storyline being at the forefront of the nigerian narrative at the moment and now of course anybody with any brain would not really agitate too much against this amoteko thing because there's really no uh, leg to stand on to go against this amoteko thing that has been set up by the Yoruba people. So if you go to the northern uh, part of the country, they have their own Hishba, they have our own, their own civilian JT, whatever, that is fighting the Boko Haram, their uh, civilian wing of a, 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 effectively a paramilitary organization being set up to, back, uh, to battle Boko Haram. And these people are actually backed by the government. This is not constitutionally provided for as well, but the provision for this are J whatever it is, is it J2 something? I can't quite remember what it's called. Uh, civilian Joint Force or something is, is what it's called in the northern region. But this uh, a structure that they have to combat um, Boko Haram in that region is set up uh, with the people who know the lay of the land in that region and is backed loosely by the Nigerian uh, government, by the Nigerian institution. So now this is of course uh, a medicine fitting the ailment because of course this is what is ex uh, exactly needed within that region. They have this problem with Boko Haram and there's no point sending an army made up of uh, Igbo people and Yoruba people and Fulani people etc. People who don't really know the terrain, there's no point sending an army to that place that don't know the terrain to go and battle these people yes you can send the army of course but you need to back it up with local knowledge and local intelligence and this is what this structure is there for you have the hishba in kano and places like that who are uh, enforcing their own doctrinal uh, perception of culture and religion and that is how they want to live and this of course has a loose and a tacit uh, consent of the Nigerian uh, state. So now the Yoruba people now off the back of what has now been the case within the northern region for years and years and years are now saying that we are now under siege and we also want to secure our uh, own space and then suddenly the Nigerian government is now telling us that it is illegal to defend your life as a Yoruba man in Yoruba land is absolutely ludicrous beyond belief. It's almost unfathomable. It's a crime against humanity, actually, what these people are doing. And I think somebody should approach the United Nations in this regard. But of course, Atiko Abubakar has fired the opening salvo in this direction. And there's nothing really to disagree with in what Atiko Abubakar has said in this piece that has been published. Uh, policing has to be local so that the uh, people of the locality are able to identify with the people that are policing their locality so they're then able to share information and interact in terms of crime prevention in their locality so there's no point in bringing a man from yobe state and borno state 
to be the commissioner of uh, police in Imo State or Anambra State or Oshun State because the people of Imo State, Anambra State or Oshun State have no trust in this guy. They view him with suspicion. They distance themselves from him. They don't recognize him as part of them and they are not willing to share anything with him. But if you bring a man that has an Igbo name, even if he's not from Anambra essentially, but has an, an Igbo name and understands the Igbo language to go and be the police commissioner in an Igbo state, they are able to interact with him more because they have this uh, sense that he has an understanding and an empathy for their plight. So they're then able to interact and cooperate with him more to secure their state. But of course, this is not the Nigerian way. The Nigerian way is to put some Fulani at the head of all of the police uh, commissions in all of the Nigerian states, especially the southwestern ones, and of course the northern ones as well, so that they can keep an eye on the natives because their agenda is really just to serve a hegemony rather than to serve the people. And this, of course, is where the Achilles heel is within the Nigerian structure because, of course, this is the crucial and critical and uh, little failing of the system. So now this failing has now led to the point that uh, the Yoruba man cannot now travel from Lagos to go and spend the weekend with his parents in the interlands, in the homestead, and go and eat good food and bush meat and drink palm wine, as we like to do in our own tradition. We can now, within our own space, uh, travel because, of course, we are being marauded and being overwhelmed by our foreign invaders of the uh, Fulani inflection. So now this is now the situation now, and it's now got into that space now that the Yorubas have not had to react. But then, of course, the Fulani government of Nigeria is now trying to kibosh uh, the Yoruba move. Conversations in the comment section, Atiku has taken a position, but what is your position? Come tell me all about it in the comment section. But before you do that, click on the red subscribe button so it turns grey. The bell button notifies you every time I drop a new video. Then come tell me if you think that the Yoruba people have an entitlement as a, under the uh, human rights, fundamental human rights uh, laws, which is an international position, by the way, not just uh, Nigeria, it's a signatory to this as well, to the uh, uh, Human Rights Convention. So under that Human Rights Convention, if the Yoruba uh, people have a right to life and a right to defend their right to life, which is effectively where the conversation is now within the Nigerian space, come tell me what your take is on all these in the comment section so i'll leave you here carry this conversation on with you in the comment section but here i say peace